is an interesting question because of the fact P is not just lying on a table but on a block. So we're going to be looking into the interaction between those two at some point. I'm just going to read the question carefully. So we've got horizontal surface. P has a mass of 2.5 kilograms. So I'll label these forces in blue. And there will be a normal reaction from B that is acting up. We're not told at this stage whether there's any friction from B. So I'll leave that off at the moment. And then P is attached to one end of a light and extensible string, which passes over a smooth fixed pulley and can act onto Q. So Q is going to be trying to pull um, P to the right. There's going to be a tension, therefore, acting to the right. And then for Q, it has its weight acting down. No normal reaction because it's suspended in midair. But there will be a tension acting up because P is sort of trying to stop it from falling down. Those are all the forces at present. So the particles released from rest with the string taut, and it's given that B remains in equilibrium. So B is not going to be moving anywhere, while P moves across B, and the tension in the string is 16.8. Find the acceleration of Q while P and B are in contact. So I can apply, I can focus on Q and apply F equals MA down. Therefore, I've got 3G minus 16.8. That's my resultant force acting down. It's going to equal 3A. I can work out 3G minus 16.8. And I can divide that by 3. 4.2 meters per second squared. On to part B, we're asked to determine the coefficient of friction between P and B. So there is going to be friction, which is going to be opposing the motion to the left. But I, I didn't know that up until this point. So the question didn't specify it. I'm going, going to call that FR. Now here's the thing, we've got an acceleration down of 4.2 for Q, but it's going to be exactly the same as acceleration to the right on P because the string is taut. Therefore, I can work out the frictional force by focusing on P and applying F equals MA to the right. The tension, 16.8, minus our frictional force is going to equal 2.5 times 4.2. And I can rearrange that to give FR equals 16.8 minus 2.5 times 4.2. So we get a 6.3. Now, we know that because it's moving, or this is uh, what we assume, that FR is equal to mu R. Now, actually, I can resolve up, in the, oh, sorry, in the vertical direction, to very quickly see that R is equal to 2.5G. In fact, you don't really need to even write that down like to say that what, how you're getting that. It must be true. And therefore, mu is going to equal 6.3 divided by 2.5g gives 9 over 35 on 0 0.257. I'll write down the exact one. All right, brilliant. All right, here comes the part where we need to consider B very carefully because we have, you know, um, particles on particles and Newton's third law is going to come into play. So here's a diagram of B and I've drawn the, the table and P on top. So let's take a look at the forces on B. Now B is it's going to experience its weight. In fact, we're trying to work out the mass. 
So the weight is going to be mg. There's going to be a normal reaction from the table on B. I'm only looking at the forces on B, by the way. So because there's a particle P acting on B, um, now remember, P's weight only acts on P. It doesn't, it's like, it kind of, we can't just say that the weight is pushing down on B, but it essentially is because uh, we have a normal reaction force of B on P pushing up at 2.5 G, and Newton's third law says there'll be an equal and opposite reaction. So I could say that R between um, P, R from P, I suppose I could say, is equal to 2.5 G. So those are all the vertical forces. Now, there's another aspect where Newton's third law comes in. We said that there's a friction acting to the left on P at 6.3. Now, Newton's third law says again that there will be an equal and opposite reaction. So B will experience a force to the right. It's a little bit like if you, like, if you just walk around a room, then you are actually exerting force on the floor behind you, and that's how you go forward. But the earth or the ground is actually experiencing a force in the opposite direction. You are trying to turn the ground or the earth every time you move. And that is a fact. That is Newton's third law in, in action. So there'll be a 6.3 here. And then finally, there will be a friction that's trying to oppose that um, that is acting to the left. So I'll call that FB. We need to somehow find the mass M. And we can do that by linking again the friction with the normal reaction. So if I resolve in the horizontal direction, then because B is in equilibrium, we were told that here, it must be that the friction acting on B is equal to 6.3. And then if we resolve vertically, it must be that RB is equal to Mg plus 2.5g. Now, here we've got, we don't know that friction's maxed out, so it's going to be Fb is less than or equal to mu R B. So friction only takes the value that it needs to, to, to stop it moving. So I want to work in terms of that. Remember, we're trying to find the least possible value of M, so we might have to do something with the inequality in a minute, but let's Let's go with that. So I can replace FB by 6.3, and that is going to be less than or equal to mu. Um, oh, and I just remembered they told us that it was 5 over 49. So 5 over 49 times mg plus 2.5g. Now, it actually turns out that when you do 5 divided by 49 and you times it by 9.8, you get 1. This is actually 1 over g. So these cancel. And therefore, m is going to be greater or equal to 6.3 minus 2.5, which is 3.8. So we're saying that it has to be greater or equal to 3.8, and this is where the equality will come in. The, the small, lowest value of m will therefore equal 3.8 kilograms. If it's heavier, it's, uh, you know, we're not going to have the maximum possible friction on it, but if it's at 3.8, that's when f will actually equal mu r, and it will... It'll be on limiting equilibrium. It'll be about to move, but it won't be moving. Right, that last bit I think is quite awkward. Uh, these questions sort of just sneak in from time to time where you have to consider um, very carefully, like you have objects stacked on one another, so you have to consider the forces carefully and uh, also in, uh, use Newton's third law. In fact, we used it twice here. But after that, it was a case of doing similar sorts of things to previous, and we've worked this out. Well done.